An essential feature of proteins is their ability to recognize and bind to other molecules. This molecular recognition event happens at specific regions of the protein. For example, this ligand binds to this protein at this location, which is known as a ligand binding site. This particular ligand binding site consists of multiple amino acid residues that directly interact with the ligand. Scientists are particularly interested in finding ligand binding sites for drug development. To facilitate this type of discovery, we have developed a computational tool for graph-based local structure alignment called GLOSA. In here, we have two local structures, one in orange and one in green. In this image, GLOSA aligns the green structure to the orange structure using an iterative maximum click searching algorithm. GLOSA assigns a GA score for GLOSA alignments, which ranges from 0 to 1, with 1 being perfect alignment. GLOSA uses a curated PDB structure library containing known ligand binding sites to predict new ligand binding sites. During GLOSA search, these binding site structures are aligned to the protein structure and assigned a GA score. The structure with the top GA score is used to predict the binding site. Additionally, we use GLOSA for binding site structure refinement. In this example, we have an initial structure in magenta. We run GLOSA on this structure to identify its binding site and select a binding site template. Using this template, we derive distance restraint potentials to run MD simulations. At the end of our simulation, we get a refined structure, shown in green, where our ligand binding site structure has been improved. We have tested this method on 40 benchmark targets and achieved a 93% success rate. This video will demonstrate the general functionality of the LBS Finder and Refiner module. We'll first show how to predict potential ligand binding sites on a protein. The protein structure we'll use is 1-PDB. 1-PDB is a crystal structure for a dihydrofolate reductase enzyme. We would like to know where potential ligand binding sites might be on this protein. To begin, go to LBS Finder and Refiner. Type 1-PDB and click Next. We only want the protein structure, so click Next again. If we wanted to modify the protein structure, this is where we would do it, and to learn how to use the structure manipulation options, please see the video demos for PDB Reader and Manipulator. In this case, we have nothing to modify, so click Next to generate a charm-compatible PDB file. When it finishes, you should view the structure to ensure that it was read correctly. Our structure is now ready to be submitted for GLOSA search in order to predict possible ligand binding sites. This graph shows the estimated running time for GLOSA search with this PDB structure, which is based on the size of the protein. Our protein 1PDB has 186 residues, so it will take about 60 minutes for GLOSA search. If you want to be notified via email when GLOSA search is completed, you can enter your email address in this box and click Next. Don't forget to save your job ID as you will need this number if you want to retry any steps with Job Retriever. When your job is done, you can click Check Status and view the results using NGL Viewer. Based on the binding site templates that were aligned to our protein, we can infer the ligand binding sites. For the protein 1PDB, the top 10 templates are shown in this table. We can select the top rank template to view the aligned binding site residues and ligands. We can also click on the PDB ID 3DL5B to view its binding site residues. S1 represents residues on our protein and S2 is for the aligned residues from the template. Based on this alignment, GLOSA predicts that this is a possible binding site and it lists these predicted binding site residues. Additionally, more information about the bound ligand can be obtained by hovering the mouse on the ligand name. In the table, we can see the sequence identity and TM score of the template protein as compared to our protein. The GA score, or GLOSA alignment score, is also displayed in the table, which measures similarity between the template and our protein. We can click on any one of the other top 10 templates to view other possible binding sites and their ligands. For example, if we click on number 10, we see a different binding site that binds to NDP. By clicking on the PDB ID 4EILG, we can view the list of binding site residues that bind to NDP. Hovering over the ligand name NDP, we can find out more information about the ligand. In addition to the top 10 templates ranked by GA score, we provide the top 10 clusters of binding sites. The clusters function to eliminate redundancy of binding site templates. For example, in top 10, template 1 and template 3 align to the same binding site. In top 10 clusters, these two templates are clustered together and template 1 becomes the representative of the cluster. Next we will show how to refine a potential binding site on a protein. In this GLOSA result page, we can select one or more templates to refine the binding site of our protein. Click on template 1 to view the binding site and the ligand. 
check the equivalent box in NGL Viewer to view equivalent residues on our protein 1PDB. The residues from our protein are shown in cyan, and the ones from the template are shown in gray. Note that residue S37 has a different conformation from the equivalent residue Q35 on our protein. Q35 faces the ligand and sterically clashes with the bound ligand DHF. What we want to do in our binding site refinement is to change the conformations of these residues on our protein toward the residue conformations seen in the template protein. By doing so, we can refine our binding site structure to optimize it for ligand docking. For example, when we dock this ligand, DHF, we do not want this steric clash between residue Q35 and the ligand. After selecting template number 1, we click Next to prepare distance restraints for MD simulation inputs that can help refine the binding site of our protein. On this page, we define the water box size, type of ions, and ion placement method. For distance restraint options, we can choose either C-alpha carbon only or C-alpha carbon plus center of mass of sidechain. In this case, we choose C-alpha carbon plus center of mass of sidechain because we saw earlier that we want to specifically modify the sidechain conformations. We would choose C-alpha carbon only when we do not care about the sidechain conformations of the binding site. Then click Next to solvate the protein. On the next page, click Next to set up periodic boundary conditions. On this page, we can generate a variety of MD simulation input options to run simulations. At the time of this recording, we can choose NAMD, GROMAX, AMBER, OpenMM, and Genesis. Once you've selected your desired simulation programs, click Next to generate equilibration and production inputs. On the last page, we can download the input files for running MD simulations to refine our structure. To learn more about this module, please read our publications on GLOSA and ligand binding site structure refinement.